Hey guys, I'm Jay and today we are going to take a look at a damn handsome Benchmade Mini Crooked River, model number 15085-2. So, as usual, we're going to start talking about the features first, then we'll get into what I like, some of the potential deal breakers, and now make sure that you guys stick around until the end because I will show you the full specs on this, all of the measurements you could possibly need and remember click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point this is the Benchmade mini crooked river and yes 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 it's finally here I have been waiting for this knife for a very very long time now the mini crook is a it's a manual action axis lock with a blade that is riding on bronze washers. Deployment is accomplished with the thumb studs that you see here, if I can only do it, and uh, also by just actuating the uh, axis lock itself. The blade, 3.4 inches long, 2.85 millimeters thick, and that's gonna be CPM S30V, so really, really good stuff. Handle is gonna be 4.5 inches long, with a handle thickness. Now it starts out at 0.49 and then it kind of flares out as you get down towards the uh, the butt end of the handle to 0.52 inches. Now the closed width, so how much room that this is gonna take up in your pocket, get this, only 1.15 inches. That is just fantastic. Now if we flip this over and look at the back side, you can see it is uh, partial open construction with the orange uh, G10 backspacer. Let me go ahead and grab the scale. Let's see how much this is gonna weigh you down. Okay, let's see how much weight we're talking about here. Nice, very good, 3.3 ounces. Wow, that's gonna be roughly the equivalent of one, two, three, four, four double A batteries. The exact same weight as the Spyderco Endura 4 and the Kershaw Link. It's gonna weigh a little bit less than the Kershaw Link. Now, part of the reason, guys, that Benchmade was able to achieve that very light weight is if you take a look on the inside there, yep, you can see they did go ahead and skeletonize those liners, which is always really nice to see. Why don't we go ahead and bring in just a couple other knives for comparison's sake so you can get an idea of the true size and the Freak, another Benchmade knife. Uh, let's bring in Spyderco Endura 4. How about, since I already had this out, the Kershaw Link, and let's do the Ooh, how about this one? The Kaiser Beg Lighter. Love this knife. And one of my all-time favorites. The Viper Vox Fortis. Now, I've left the Kaiser Beg Lighter out here for a reason. Just because I wanted you guys to see how similar that these two knives really are. I mean, they would both be considered gentlemen's folders. I mean, you're talking about there's different blade steel, of course, and obviously the handle shape. But as far as the, the width of the blade, very similar. The length of the blade, very similar. Actually, just the overall length, uh, very, very similar to the Mini Crook. Now, let's talk about what I really, really like about this knife. Well, let's first, let's start with the blade. And it is a, a flat ground uh, clip point with a really nice satin finish. I love these aluminum bolsters up against the diamond wood scales. And do you notice there are only two body screws and they're both black. I love that. Now that the action, now that it's broken in, the action is, oh, it is just so, so good. Look at, try not to hit the camera, guys. Hold on. 
beautiful. So you can see it does, it drops shut and the access lock is breaking in nicely as well because I'm able to operate it with just from one side. Let's uh, check the centering. I believe it is dead on. Yes, it is. Look at that. Now, the, the Mini Crook is, well, it is fun to fondle. It really is. The handle, look at that. The nice curve, it just kind of, my hand just kind of wraps around that, that curved handle. Very, very comfortable grip. There is just one area jimping, just up here at the top on the spine of the handle. There is, of course, a very nice size sharpening choil. And the balance, I believe, is perfect. Yeah, exactly where it needs to be. Now, this rides in the pocket really, really nice. The bulk of the knife, as you can see now, is down here. So that's going to be sitting at the bottom of your pocket. And that is exactly where it should be. This is not the clip that comes with it, but I'm sure you probably figured that out already. Um, the clip that uh, that comes from the factory on here is the, um, the split arrow. Not a fan of that clip at all. You know, I know a lot of people do like it, and I, I mean no offense, but yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of the split arrow clip. Now that we've talked about some of the good stuff, of course, now we have to get in to some of the potential deal breakers. Now, the action is the first potential deal breaker that I can see. And now you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Jay, you just said that the action is really, really good. And it is, it is. However, when you attempt to operate the access lock with just one finger from one side, the action is terrible. Now here it is again with two. You can see it just drops. When I go back to one finger, yeah, really, really bad. And let me show you this now, the Benchmade Freak. Okay. One finger on the axis lock. Drops. Same with the Doug Ritter Griptilian. One finger. Drops. Not so with the Mini Crooked River. So it has something to do with this bar becoming tilted when you pull down on it, thus not allowing the free drop. But then with two hand, two fingers, excuse me, it's it's perfect. The the blade stock. Very, very thin. What did we say? 2.85 millimeters. So yeah, that's that's pretty thin blade and fairly delicate tip. Now when I hear the words hunt series, I think some words that, that come to mind. Um, rugged, durable, outdoors, feces, banjo, urine. Those are some of the things that I think of when I hear uh, hunt series. Now, if we look at the Kershaw dividend, okay, 2.32 millimeter blade thickness. Definitely not a hunting knife. I guess you could use it, but the Kershaw Link, 2.80 millimeter blade thickness. Very, very close to the Crooked River. And the last one, I'll show you. The Kaiser Beg Lighter is actually has thicker blade stock at 3.10 millimeters. I mean, is this? A hunting knife? 
Now, this next gripe is, it really, really is minor. So I don't know if you could really call it a potential deal breaker, but I'm just, I'm, I'm not a fan of that, the gap right between here at the blade tang and the bolster. You know, cold steel knives, a lot of their knives have very large gaps here. And yeah, this is this is good size. I mean, in your pocket, that does, you know, it makes it possible for maybe something getting caught on here. Now, if we flip this over and I wanna draw your attention to where the, the bolster and the diamond wood scale, where they actually fit together. This might be kind of hard for you guys to see on camera, but I'm gonna do my best. There's a little bit of a gap there. I mean, it's not huge, but I could see that filling up with crud. And now I wanna bring in another knife just to show you. This is the Buck uh, Selkirk. Okay, this is a $35 knife. $30 knife. And if you look at the fitment here of the bolster up against the scale, you can see that that is really, really tight. No gap at all. So yeah, so that bothers me just a little bit about the Crooked River. Now this next issue is probably the most common potential deal breaker and, and that's gonna be the price. Now at $187, that is just, I just, that's too much money. I mean, that's a lot of money. And have you noticed now the full size uh, Crooked River, remember when that was full release, first release, that came out, that was about uh, $190, maybe $195. And now have you noticed pretty much every site that I've checked the price, 200, 205. Now we're not, granted, it's it's a slight, small increase, but it's an already expensive knife that now costs even more. And so I'm kind of wondering, was it, you know, maybe Benchmade thought it'd be kind of too hard to justify having a $3 price difference if the full-size Crooked River was still at $190, and this being at $187, it would probably be kind of tough to justify that slight difference in price for a much larger knife. Now, for those of us that can only afford maybe one one higher end knife a month, or maybe even every other month. I can't recommend this because you can really do a lot better for a lot less money. I mean, I love this knife, and so this is really, really tough for me to sit here and say that I think it costs too much because I have been waiting for this knife for a very long time. But I love it, there's just no value here. Especially considering S30V is excellent blade steel. But you can do so much better for a lot less than $187. So as promised guys, here are the specs. Of course, pause and read. But I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by and letting me talk guys with you. I will see you guys at the next video. Hey, you guys take care, okay?